I'm absolutely blown away at what goes into a bottle of wine. The season, the weather, the soil. Did you pick at the right time? Was this particular clone ready or was that clone ready a week later? We see consumers wanting to know more about the origins of their produce and also about what happens to it every step along the supply chain. And as we uh, expand our operation and we move into uh, the global markets, I believe the consumers are demanding assurances and guarantees around these commitments to sustainability, commitments to fruit provenance, commitments to quality. KPMG has invested in the development of a specialist food and agribusiness practice. This group of subject matter experts leads and supports engagements across the firm, including management consulting, deals advisory, enterprise and risk. Biosecurity, supply chain assurance, food provenance, food assurance and food safety are all key focus areas for the team. In this case, we have worked with our digital specialists to assess the food production supply chain, to map data collection, link this to business needs and determine ways to automate or digitise that process. Subsequently, we link to our blockchain experts to contemplate utilising data for different outcomes, including a new customer experience using product labelling technology and the smartphone. We grow the fruit, uh, we pick the fruit, we transport the fruit all the way through to our own distribution arm of our business. We invest heavily in acquiring and capturing as many data points as possible. Evaporation, it's uh, irrigation, uh, soil moisture, wind, uh, temperature, daily mean. You know, we take all of these inputs um, and they govern our uh, time and allocation of resource. I know the guys out here at Pooley Wines are starting to put all of their information into a cloud-based system. I mean, there's a lot of solutions out there that are starting to digitise um, compliance and regulation me measures, but they're just on a digital platform. It's not creating um, a tamper-proof trusted system like blockchain. So there is technology that is protecting that data and the integrity of the data. KPMG Origins Augmented Reality App is a simple visualisation of five stakeholders collaborating to deliver the full provenance story and delight the consumer. Starting with the grape grower, providing the harvest details, followed by the winemaker, sharing ageing and the production process insights, followed by the packaging and traceability identifiers that enables the logistics company to complete the journey and constantly monitor the temperature and other important parameters, like ambient light. At the distribution point, the consumer can see and verify the certificate of authenticity provided by an independent auditor. Where we see incredible value being generated through this blockchain technology, through AR, through um, any kind of app where we can tell our story, we can recreate the experience that they have here at Richmond in the cellar door, uh, that, that's priceless. So I thought the opportunity to talk about a parallel product, uh, as Sean says, wine in this case, uh, might be quite useful for the producers in the room to just reflect on the fact that blockchain in itself doesn't create trust. It's actually all the stages and the contribution of data that goes into the blockchain is where those trust points are. Um, as you heard Lucy talking about the work she was doing with Pooley Wines, it starts with actually understanding every stage in the supply chain and working out what those critical points of trust are and capturing that and um, integrating that into the blockchain. A lot of people think, and Sean, you raised this yesterday, that um, blockchain itself creates trust for the consumer. Uh, it absolutely doesn't. It's only as good as the content that goes into it, which is why when you think about a blockchain ch um, channel to uh, communicate to a consumer, you have to really think about the governance protocols that are going around that supply chain. Who's allowing people to put data into it? How is that data being authenticated? And that is where the trust in the brand comes from. And why is that important? Well, as we've heard Hollis talk about, the consumers are increasingly wanting to engage with the source of their food product. This is because in the day of social media, there is a lot more information about product failure and recall. The impact of food scares is reached, reaching all of us every day through our news feeds which means people are more inclined to want to validate the source and the trust and the, um, the process that their food has gone through. This is less important to the Australian consumer, but far more important to consumers that are dependent on imported products or where they simply don't have the level of trust that we enjoy in our food systems. So when you think about the consumer of tomorrow really wanting to authenticate and prove the origin of their product, 
we must think about what data do we have in our part of that supply chain? What is our responsibility to surface that and put it into a immutable channel uh, that will get all the way through the consumer? Uh, some work we did researching uh, the uh, Chinese market recently identified that the top three issues affecting the middle class in making a food purchase decision are food safety, freshness and ingredients. More concerning was that 87% of their wallet spend was going on food. So these three things are critical if we want to attract uh, the attention of consumers in that market to buy our products. And it's the same market that's challenged by food fraud. And this often occurs at the labelling stage. So we need to be thinking about how do we enable this blockchain uh, solution to bring trust to the consumer. But it's only going to work if we've got multiple points of authentication on the actual end product. So I'm going to touch on a couple of examples of multi-point authentication on labels. But I want to just also share with you an experience when we were talking to our client Treasury Wine Estate about the challenge of food fraud for them. So food fraud is about a 10 to 15 billion dollar issue globally. The wine industry it's about 3 billion. And here's an example of Benfolds, a ripoff label of a Penfolds product, and no relation to my good self, uh, going into the Chinese market. When you talk to Treasury, the majority of the wine fraud for their products is actually going on a ship from Australia into China with false labels on it. So we must solve the problem at the source, not just at the end market. It is a real issue. But we can learn a lot from different industries. In this case, we've taken some insights from the um, registered drugs market in the US where there's a blockchain system set up to trace back returns of drugs that have passed their expiry date and the authentication of the drug is using the labelling technology that Hollis and Gennady have been talking about. The important point here is that the technology development and packaging is moving so quickly that we can now get to a point where you've got registered, licensed watermarks and printed labels, becoming one of the trust points. When you overlay this with a LAVA or a um, certified um, QR code system, you're creating additional trust points. And when the two things come together and are read by a smartphone, you prove the authentication of the product back to the geo point that that smartphone is reading it. It's all about registering licenses against, uh, of labels against products and registering that product through the blockchain so that it, when the consumer engages with it, um, there's an authentication channel as to where that um, product has moved through the supply chain and all the data points have been validated on the way. The key though is that if you're going to do anything with blockchain and food assurance is not just to think about quality and provenance. Those are important, but so too are the certifications. And this is where I think in the meat industry, LPA for example, becomes really, really relevant. You have some great assets in the on-farm assurance certification, um, the vendor declarations. So much of that data we need to start thinking about how do we actually add into the blockchain to tell a richer story when it ultimately reaches the consumer. But to do that, you need to understand the end-to-end -end supply chain and look for those trust points where critical data is captured and think about how do you pass that over using digital technology. We're not trying to create more and more uh, time and administration. This has to be machine integrated. So IoT sensors feeding data into the blockchain, for example. What's really interesting here is this uh, red and green line. This is where we journey map the experience of the participants in the supply chain. And when that red line drops down, that's a pain point. That's a frustration. So as you're imagining new solutions to bring trust through your supply chain and you're doing it digitally with tools like blockchain, we would advocate that you stop and think about how do you make the process simpler? Because every stage in the supply chain needs to benefit from this technology, not just the consumer. And that's an important point to remember because it's unlocking efficiency for all players. So you can see that the trusted blockchain story ultimately then requires a combination of different technologies. And so no one solution is ever going to be the answer to bring confidence to your products, to the consumer. It is the combination. And if you reflect on the last three days here, you can realise that a lot of what we've been seeing in terms of tools to capture data are feeding into this trusted supply chain all the way to the consumer. 
So next time you're having a look at the 19 crimes, it won't be long soon before you can actually also have a look at the Pooley Wines example um, and see the backstory, the proof, the entwine certification that's carried on that product. And soon we hope one of Australia's largest rice brands will be using this technology into China as well. So I think the future is bright, Sean, in terms of technology, um, but just remember everyone in the supply chain has a role to play and you just got to think about how do you use this to save you time and build confidence in your products. Thanks very much, Sean.